And this evening the event is rather unusual because often because of our status as an American university in Japan, we get scholars and experts from the foreign community, but very seldom do we get authorities that have experience within the Japanese government and the issues that we've been addressing. Um, for many of us, I think we're kind of looking in the window from the outside and don't necessarily see it in the terms of a person who's worked in this. Our speaker today, Tetsunade Hida, has an experience working as a nuclear engineer and a researcher. He is the executive director of the Institute for Sustainable Energy Policies, a nonprofit and independent research institute in Tokyo. He's been very influential in the last five years or so, um, pushing Japanese government energy policy, including issues related to anti nuclear movement. In September 2011, he launched the Japan Renewable Energy Foundation, which brings together some 100 experts from around the world to analyze obstacles to implementing renewable energy and to offer policy recommendations to the new Japanese government. We may know him as well because he ran for governor of Yamaguchi Prefecture and on an anti-nuclear platform. And although he didn't win that particular election, it really did bring a lot of attention on the national stage to these issues that perhaps had not happened before that. So I feel very fortunate this evening to have Mr. Ida and Uh, thank you for the introducing me and uh, thank you for inviting here to be uh, lectures. Um, and the uh, first, the maybe uh, 30 minutes or 40 minutes, I uh, give a lecture along with a kind of general, uh, the very kind of broad sense of uh, these questions. Uh, and the, the afterward, I, I, I got the, some kind of more uh, political or deeper questions in advance, and uh, I will uh, try to answer uh, uh, so a question and answer session after the, the lectures. So, um, the kindly the uh, introducing me. Um, I I used to be, or I originally started my career as a uh, uh, nuclear engineer. Uh, after graduating the, the master degree of in nuclear engineering school at Kyoto University, and the, the starting with uh, the so called Kobe Steel, uh, working on a nuclear waste management, the, it's very the, 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 the happening to the relating with the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. The the, the last my job at Kobe Steel was the, the spent fuel dry storage at Fukushima Daiichi plant that I was working on uh, almost uh, 20 years before. The, and then during my uh, days of nuclear uh, waste management, I temporarily moved to so-called SCREAPI, Central Research Institute for Electric Power Industry. The, there, I worked for two two works. The one is under the Nuclear Safety Commission. The, I work on uh, kind of legislation of the nuclear regulatory uh, various safety uh, standard. The working sometimes IAEA, you know, working deeply inside the nuclear government, uh, the Japanese government and the nuclear division. And the, the other half, uh, I work inside the electric uh, industries. The uh, kind of so during my days I split half of my me uh, half of I uh, work on a kind of nuclear regulatory and half of I uh, nuclear work work on nuclear promoters. But uh, during almost ten ten years I worked throughout the the nuclear industry uh, nuclear regulatory and electric industry of the nuclear divisions. Uh, then finally, I uh, uh, decided to uh, change my career from nuclear promoter or nuclear so-called village. Uh, by the way, I, I named in nuclear village in Japanese Genshiro Kumura is I, I named in a, on a on the first mass media in a Asahi Shimbun 
the, it was now uh, everyone in Japan, uh, Japanese people know the world of Japanese Geisho Kimura or, or nuclear village. It's something like uh, very the absence of our kind of centers. No, no one uh, take responsibilities uh, uh, and very the, uh, connected in each other's uh, the uh, defense, the nuclear promotions notions uh, against outside critics. So, so those kind of uh, Japanese one of uh, maybe in a. Uh, like a European and the US outside Japan is the so-called nuclear mafia or something like that. But in Japan, we especially name it nuclear village. It's, uh, because of the center, it's, it's uh, completely the whole or center is outside. But anyway, so uh, then I moved out from Japan to the Sweden. Uh, I ran at the uh, like, uh, Atlund University or Energen. Uh, especially Dean of Energy and Energy Policy and Politics in the Nordic countries. And at the time, the beginning of the 90s, uh, throughout the 90s, is a Europe was uh, the days of our kind of so-called energy and environmental revolutions. The like uh, environment tax or carbon tax was introduced in 1990 or uh, so in Finland and Norway and, and Sweden, Denmark and Netherlands. And also, the, it was the start of uh, so -called, uh, the uh, electricity market, the, the uh, reform or uh, market liberalization starting from uh, the UK and uh, moved to Norway and, and Nordic countries and sp spread over. And also, the, the renewable energy promotions were starting uh, like in, at the year, year of 1990, the German uh, Germany introduced the first Finland type law in 1990, and the, uh, Denmark introduced in 1992, and Spain introduced in 1994, and Kyoto Protocol or Kyoto Conference was take, happened in 1997. At the time, uh, the European countries uh, promote uh, proposed to minus 15 percent of the carbon. Uh, deduction by 2010, uh, by reason of uh, uh, they aim to the doubling of the renewable by 2010 from 1997. So, so uh, those kinds of things are happening uh, throughout the 1990s in Europe. It was very amazing to for me to uh, I was kind of trapped within a nuclear village and Japan is still uh, the government and the, the industries are kind of nuclear king, kingdom and nuclear anti-nuclear people are, are very much marginalized and, the, and so but the, at the same time uh, and so, the society was changing and so uh, the, I came back from Sweden in 1998 I, uh, starting up uh, this institute, the society might or must change thus to by changing uh, energy and policy, not not just like a kind of movement or demonstrations. Of course, demonstration more from public the movement is very important, but we need uh, kind of upgrade the policy and the politics. So since then, I work. Uh, throughout, uh, can try to the upgrading Japanese energy and American policy, including nuclear policy as well. So, uh, uh, our ICEP is ups, our ICEP doing our kind of uh, the uh, doing uh, not just a kind of research on on the kind of table. We are doing to uh, research really reflecting uh, kind of real world of the, the policy or politics of the government. The, I myself drafting the Japanese first feeling type. Feeling type means uh, 
the renewable promotions law uh, that originally introduced in, in Germany in 1990, it was modified in 2000. It, it was now uh, maybe almost 100 countries introducing an amazing effect, uh, not yet in, in, the, in the US, but uh, the Canada, Ontario state already introduced. But anyway, so it was, uh, I was drafting 1998 that law and uh, Worked with the parliament to uh, and uh, to set up a, a supra coalitions from LDP to Kome Party and the and Democrat and the even Communist Party ally to introducing this freedom in two thousand around two thousand, but it was failed. Uh, German Germany succeed upgrade freedom tariff in 2000 and it was amazing effect but uh, in japan we failed uh, because of our the uh, ally of meki the mean the bureaucrats and electric monopoly allied to to block to the parliamentary legislations and then uh, then instead they introducing so-called renewable portfolio standard. Uh, it was a very bureaucratic control to try to push down the renewable. It's a very tiny numbers. Uh, we have renewable, except for large hydro, we have at that time 0.3% renewable <laughs> all among all renewable. Uh, uh, all of electricity supply, they aim to uh, renewable the target 1.3 percent by 2010. It's a only zero, uh, only one point uh, uh, renewable target within the 10 years. It's a like a similar similar policy like the UK aim to 15 percent from 1.5 to 15 by 2010 or and so on, so, or, or Texas uh, into, aim to something 20% or so the, such kind of large numbers other like a country or states, uh, but the Jap Japanese government, especially METI, uh, negotiate with the electric monopoly, try to keep renewable energy to marginalize in order to keep their monopoly can continue. And uh, uh, this is very kind of uh, one of the typical things. And also the Tokyo Metropolitan Government, uh, last 10 years we very strongly, uh, deeply work with the Tokyo Metropolitan Government, uh, the famous of our former Ishika Ishihara governors. But uh, uh, actually the Embat Bureau is a very entrepreneurial in the Japanese linear or, or embassy policy in the Japanese history. And the, the most recently they introduced so-called the first Japan trade scheme in 2000. It's the first cities uh, introducing Japan trade and also the first Japan trade scheme in Asian countries. Uh, they are very much entrepreneur of the Ebert Bureau, and uh, it, it's a working with one of the result of the 10 years collaboration with our institute and Tokyo Metropolitan Government Ebert Bureaus, and they are still very much running very much the four forerunner among other city in Japan or even the other city in the world, and the. And also, we, we are working uh, also, uh, uh, this is this part, and also we are so-called uh, energy or renewable energy business model development to uh, we work with various local community to set up a community bond for promoting renewable energy and uh, set up um, set on local renewable energy business model and 
now nowadays almost 30 40 local communities owner like wind powers community owner wind uh, source using community bonds uh, we, we support or we jointly uh, working with local areas and also especially we we set up a, we, we first set up a, a renewable community kind of financing scheme uh, last 10 years uh, it is also our kind of entrepreneurship and, and so so kind of a, we are like a, in some part like a social entrepreneur and or social innovation and in other part we are kind of policy innovators as working so um, when uh, I was uh, I was the the March 11 2011 the I was in Potsdam in Germany uh, and the, I was very much the uh, I was happy to escape the kind of chaotic Tokyo areas at that time but I, I uh, watching out throughout the day to uh, to through the internet to a situation of the Japanese, the especially chaotic situation of our Fukushima Daiichi power plant, I keep in communicate with the politicians, both LDP and DPJ, and uh, uh, try to keep advice to. And the, it was the and I I was as a, the, in Potsdam with uh, so-called Dr. Kraus Tepper. <laughs> He was uh, appointed as uh, the by Melkel afterward as uh, the the so-called uh, German like uh, committee for nuclear fallout. And so it was kind kind of for myself kind of historical coincidence of with him. But, but I strongly feel the this accident is a kind of Japanese uh, kind of historical uh, like a turning point must be from uh, so called the three of the sun I, uh, since then I try to keep to stories that that, that means uh, on, for the Japanese history we have like a, the first sad is the first contamination a sad times of the contamination of by radioactive materials is like um, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and Fukushima is the first. And also the, the, the third internationally, <coughs> historically, the very the important and very influence Act, nuclear accident, like a three mile or accident at Chernobyl, and then Fukushima. And also for Japanese history, it's, it's a starting of a major era. And after World War II, and Fukushima accident is a, like a third uh, turning point, point of the Japanese history. So, um, The, it was actually the Japanese so-called nuclear village was uh, really, really collapsed down be even before the Fukushima accident. There are so many series of uh, like a small or rather major incidents, like uh, even just the Tokyo Tokyo electric uh, power companies. The they had. Uh, in 2003, they had falsifying the data uh, of the uh, various nuclear trouble, and the and also 2007 they had hit by the so-called Kashiwazaki carrier nuclear power plant by a larger, uh, rather large the the earthquake and the, it was stopped all, all of a sudden and it was some fires and some uh, water surge and some uh, but emergency 
the response never happened at that time, but they never take like a corrections of the, their emergency response for the electric power TEPCO and also the, the government as well. Then they cannot the, the correct any like uh, their the safety improvement uh, or local the there's the rescue rescue system or and so on so everything so they finally account to a uh, Fukushima accident not just uh, historically the la largest one of largest tsunami or the earthquake it was more the real the cause was uh, not because historical largest the tsunami, but uh, more the crops down inside the kind of human system or organization system. So I, I often e, refer to the very similarity with the World War II days of the Japanese or, uh, organizations, especially the higher uh, executive system and, and also the nuclear and other like a Japanese uh, executive system. The, the typical similarity is that this is Wosep Yamato. It's a, at that time, it was the, the world's largest warship. The, it was very similar with the nuclear system in uh, nowadays. It's a, uh, especially, typically, three aspect. The one aspect is a uh, a failure of our technology choice. The, at that time, the, the, the Japanese Navy decided to build this the historically largest warship, the whole world largest warship. At, at that time, already the, the technology is moving from warship to more called air fight days. But the Japanese, uh, the top executive, uh, didn't understand kind of those kind of historical change or so stick to old kind of myths to uh, the warship type of battle. It's a very similar to stick to nuclear. And very much disregard of the renewable small scale district renewable energy technology. And also the second similarity is uh, very much stick to or create of the myths and stick to myths. Uh, the this historically or the world largest warship Yamato create the myth in uh, not even inside the, the navy outside that can also all over the Japanese society at that time. Uh, as far as this worship Yamato is intact, the Japan can be kind of protected or and so on. So it is kind of very creating the Japanese like a nuclear is a safe and the nuclear is a kind of uh, the symbol of energy kind of security or energy uh, supply, security, and so on, so on. And it's very, and the nuclear is cheap as well, so it's all the kind of miss, it's, it's, it's really miss, it's um, uh, opposite side. And the third, the most, the, the kind of, uh, the not, not the wise decisions is, uh, at that time, the, April or early, uh, late of March and early April of the, the 1945, uh, this Yamato uh, is ordered to go for Okinawa without any, any or single guard uh, air fighters. <laughs> so everyone knows, even the, the top commanders knows 
the Miyamoto must be uh, sunk down. But but uh, uh, at that time the decision was, and also this command is completely nonsense of the strategy or even. Uh, but the that, that command was dispatched and everyone allowed to that. So it is kind of a in Japanese nowadays a nuclear <coughs> discard or nuclear or more, more funny thing is a new de nuclear deprocessing is more nonsense things. But they are the everyone knows it is kind of nonsense, irrational the thinking. But the within a governmental decision system is a such kind of nonsense. Uh, allowed to go uh, to dispatch the very long way. So the very kind of typical the Japanese kind of decision systems uh, are very much similar at that time during World War II and nowadays. Looks like very modernized, democratized government we should have, but uh, the the center of the, the powers is very similar. So um, it's a very simplified uh, scheme <coughs> the, from my kind of experience. The, the politicians, Japanese kind of politicians, especially the like parliamentarians, uh, nowadays little, little by a change and change, but the, the, the politicians as a parliament just leading out, uh, they are very much the behave as a kind of very much ritual. They are leading out the text. Uh, the question is also uh, all, already in written text, and answer like, by the minister is already in prepared. And also next questions is also prepared in advance. And the next answer is also prepared by the bureaucrat. So both the question and answer are prepared by the bureaucrat. So uh, most of the discussion under the parliament is a kind of a, a plane or like a kabuki theaters. <laughs> so, uh, so this kind of politicians are playing a kabuki theaters and everything are prepared by kind of bureaucrat. The bureaucrat are changing every two years and, and also they are very much the sophisticated and also they are very yeah uh, now the current the Tokyo Metropolitan Governors Inose san saying is very uh, easy to understand the analysis that the U.S. is the United States of America, and Japan is United States of the Ministry. So uh, each ministry has a kind of more autonomy. Uh, every bureaucrat under the ministry contribute to keeping the each ministry's powers, and they are very sophisticated and the literatures prepared for the ministers or even the questionnaire. So, uh, so, and the, their text is so sophisticated or big, between the sophisticated and big. So it is so-called named is a Kasumigaseki, Bungaku Kasumigaseki literatures. So uh, the politician cannot understand those sophisticated between the big. So, uh, so real power in, is in a kind of ministry, not the minister, it's a ministry. So uh, those uh, never care about the, the most of the real result. And the, so, and the academy, academias are not so uh, built in uh, the most of the academias, apart from the real politics, and some academias are uh, involved in the, this process, and uh, they are kind of uh, uh, within uh, each 
the like uh, policy village. So um, it's kind of uh, so um, so as a result of the, this kind of failure of uh, nuclear or climate or renewables, the, the policies are very much apart from the reality, apart from the reality, and apart from the norms, and they are con contributing to the ministries of interest. And of course, ministries are very much close to the industries, especially the Kedan and or the power companies, communities. So, um, so uh, it was a chance to destructure, to somehow uh, destroying or even affect at the time of uh, DPJ was the, the take that administration in 2009. But they, they couldn't, uh, almost nothing. The, every, oh, most, not maybe, most or all that kind of so called uh, promise or is, was, the, the result was a completely opposite side, like uh, the, the, the US base in the Okinawa uh, issues as well, and the nuclear is, uh, uh, they, as a beginning, they tried to nuclear like, uh, export to promote. Uh, they never say that, and also consumer tax or TPP and so on. Every single issues, they originally promised to the, the Japanese public, uh, everything betrayed and they are moved by bureaucrat because of the system. Instead, they break that system. So, but in, in actually, in the future, in Japan, uh, nuclear in must declining because of our uh, various uh, like uh, the reasons. And first is a kind of. Japanese nuclear power is very much aging and very unsafe. So uh, now our Kedan and, and Japanese government try to keep and also even increase the nuclear, uh, this Abe and LDP administration. But um, in reality, it's very difficult to increase or even difficult to keep the current capacity that most of the nuclear uh, some of the nuclear like uh, soon shut down or abandoned, and also some of them are keeping shut down, and some of them are difficult to uh, start up because of the economy or and so on. Um, the so Japanese nuclear power share must be declining uh, at some part, and the right after the. The March 11, we ICEP, uh, our institute proposed to new so-called energy shift ideas. So uh, nuclear, uh, in soon or later, should be abandoned, and renewable must be boosted, and also energy efficiency also must be boosted, and total kind of supply of a uh, Japanese. Electricity supply are uh, not necessarily increased because uh, we have already very mature society and mature the energy supply. Not not like a developing country, so we can even decrease total supply by by using energy efficiency, and then renewable energy must be increased. Then finally, soon at some point. Hopefully, 2050, that all the electricity must be replaced by renewable and energy efficiency. So this is since then it's a kind of a uh, uh, kind of central idea of our energy the policy, even in the government or as an institute. So um, uh, the last. 
months of the, the DPJ administration, <coughs> they tried to uh, decide or agree to so-called energy the plan, but they couldn't. But this is basically along with the, this idea <coughs> that nuclear should be abandoned by 2030s, by the end of 2030s, and, and also renewable must be increased 30% uh, by 2030, and, and so on. So, so this is very kind of along uh, set the agenda of our energy policy at the time. And the, especially renewable energy is, it is so-called fourth revolutions last 10 or five years, the, especially the German or European areas. This fourth revolution means uh, like uh, agricultural revolutions and the so-called industrial revolutions and ITC revolutions. This energy revolution is, is the fourth revolution of the humankind. So this is uh, uh, not, not cumulative, this is an annual increase of uh, wind and solar and nuclear. And nuclear is annual growth is almost uh, saturated or even <coughs> annually decreasing. But uh, wind and solar is annually, annual increase of wind and solar is increasing. So that means accelerating, the increasing rate is accelerating. Uh, so this is 2010 and 2011 and 2012 is more uh, like uh, wind power. Last year wind power increased the 40, 43 gigawatt in worldwide and wind and solar was increased 31 gigawatt last year and the and total capacity of wind power last year uh, in, in the worldwide is 280 gigawatt and solar was 100 gigawatts in so and nuclear is 370 gigawatt so wind power and solar some of wind power and solar is 30 380 gigawatt is surplus nuclear power last year and this is, and two years after wind powers increase at low, at, at least 100 gig, 100 gigawatts so so two years after wind power alone surpass nuclear capacity so this kind of accelerating the growth of uh, the society or, or energy system is more and more changed. Like uh, even, even some three, five years before, any single like a nuclear uh, no, energy researcher predict that renewable can supply 100% in some countries or the, uh, worldwide. But nowadays, many, many researchers or uh, predict renewable can supply 100%. So this is the unique comparison of the, this is the nuclear predictions, prediction history. So the nuclear is old time that like a nuclear people are can had a dream to la rapid increase, but the reality was um, the most uh, more that betrayed their kind of dream. The reality is now saturating, even even decreasing the nuclear. But this is a renewable. And in Germany's case, the every forecast, the reality is over the every forecast. So the renewable increase is the, the every more than the anyone forecasting maybe right now. So maybe some of you know the Eric Martino of our institute. Uh, last two years he interviews the 170 visionaries, uh, policy makers or entrepreneur or business by 
persons or researchers or and so in the worldwide and uh, and kind of piling up their visions and also over 50 institute uh, future visions and uh, the there are so many variety of renewable share by 2050 from about 10 percent to 20 percent or 80 percent we I said for more 100 percent in in the Japanese case so uh, especially most conservative institute see a uh, most lower share of renewables but most progressive institute or from like a Greenpeace uh, see uh, 80 percent or, or more even 100 percent renewable so but those like history of future projections comparisons maybe the reality is much more I guess so and also the second aspect of the fourth revolution of energy is now economy and industrial revolutions that so the money more and more going toward renewable energy investment and uh, every year almost 20 percent increase um, and last year was first time because of uh, like a European the, uh, economic crisis and so on but last year was almost liberated but uh, last year was uh, three three hundred the billion dollars or something so uh, the many institutes see uh, by 2020 renewable investment uh, more than the one one hundred one trillion dollars or something like that and the could be so every 20 every year 20 percent increase or uh, investment so uh, so many new like uh, the kind of company firms of the renewable energy industries come up with uh, and both uh, like uh, productions and also the energy uh, developers renewable energy developers and the so so many countries especially the the US Germany are uh, this is a bit old and now China is top runners and this is a wind powers and the the China and the UK and Germany and Spain and so on and also this is comparison of Japan and there used to be uh, Japan was the most largest country of the solar but now Germany is much higher than the so uh, in a Japanese ah this is Germany case ja Germany's energy shift is going on renewable is increasing and the 2012 last year end uh, renewable is reaching a 25 percent share of electric supply it was starting 2000 it's only six percent now 25 percent and the uh, nuclear was used to be a 30 percent now are 14 percent and the more decreasing so this is kind of typical kind of energy shift uh, or success one of success or leading model and the, uh, in, in Germany, especially the solar PV is recently rapidly increasing. Solar PV is now uh, data is uh, producing a, a much electricity. So, and this is wind, and this is solar. This, this both wind and solar electricity is a kind of, the marginal cost is zero for electricity market. Uh, this zero electricity largely go into the market spot market and now spot market this is spot market price spot market price is used to be 
peak price was more higher, but now peak price, because of solar, the peak price are go down. So they are more from the market point of view, the renewable energy has a kind of good uh, influence to the market price uh, bring down. And also, uh, three third aspect of the, the fourth revolution is the uh, so-called distributed and network the kind of regime change. So this is very typically shown the Danish case in 1980. Uh, it was centralized, monopolized electric company supplying electric electricity by using big centralized coal fires only 30 years before. Nowadays, there are no single coal fire plant. They are more very decentralized, about 6,000 wind powers and about 10,000 small CHP distributed connected network. And more important thing is the ownership. At that time, ownership was central, local, centralized local monopolized electric industry had this big power plant. And people are just paying uh, the money and buying the power. But nowadays, 85% of the wind powers and the 80% of CHP were owned by local community, like a local cooperative, or farmers own the electric power, they are not paying the power, not the, they are selling the power, they got the money, so the ownership was completely changed. So this kind of uh, regime change is also along, going along these uh, fourth revolutions. So in the Japanese case also, uh, we have so community powers are uh, we promoting all over Japan. And now uh, about the 30, 40 community powers uh, now setting uh, more, uh, coming up with. And the, the March 11th, uh, the Fukushima accident uh, very much the change that kind of OS of the Japanese kind of society. Nowadays, the like a hot demonstration is disappears. But the people are already can change the perception of the nuclear, perception of the government, and perception to the nuclear or linear or electricity monopolies. They are more the the hope to or they are working or starting up to the kind of energy kind of democracy or energy ownership. So so uh, at that time during LDP days, uh, I don't know that this LDP administration go some uh, how how long years, but uh, they their energy policy must fail because their idea is very much the uh, old times. They are trying to keep old fashion scheme uh, against the, this historical change. So uh, soon or later, the Japanese energy policy is, because of the March 11th, shocked or will awake the public awareness of the energy issues. So the our like uh, it's time to historical change. Maybe after Abe or LDP administrations, Japanese uh, energy policy must change from like a centralized to local distributed or supply uh, or monopoly to more demand uh, pool idea or hierarchy. Uh, organization to network and fossil nuclear based to renewable and energy efficiency and, the, and more just economic growth or 
to more the sense of sufficiency or justice or welfare too. So we, we are kind of crossroad and the after Abe and maybe the other session, we have uh, again chance to change that, that uh, direction of the Japanese energy policy and the society. Okay, thank you for your attention. Hello, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. It was very informative. My name is Dre Crane. I am the undergraduate student here at TUJ. Um, I also have uh, two questions uh, that were kind of excluded from the presentation. One is uh, have Japan having nuclear energy? Uh, it might be kind of uh, a rumor, but uh, Japan has nuclear energy for a reason that they have the potential to have nuclear weapons. Uh, if that, how that's a factor uh, in this uh, uh, goal, and also how natural gas uh, plays an effect uh, in uh, energy for Japan. Thank you. Yes, uh, it used to be uh, just a kind of rumors and now, nowadays uh, I was on a, like a, un, until this February or last or even last December I was in a government committee of the energy policy even even official government committee some committee members uh, explicitly argue on that things so uh, of course not seriously are uh, kind of the research for nuclear weapon physically R&D but uh, there are some maybe uh, potentially uh, uh, that it, it uh, kind of a one of factor to keeping nuclear but uh, the the argument was still very much the premature the like uh, if 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 discussing seriously if we throw out the commercial nuclear power we, we already have a nuclear technology and we already have uh, the huge number of spent fuel the, the we we have right already almost more than 100 tons of plutonium if uh, if the process the this spent fuel so it's enough to kind of potential technology if if, if that is their reason to keep in commercial. Uh, so it's a not, we don't need like right, keep commercial nuclear powers, but we can, we can have uh, this technology. So uh, this is a kind of uh, the, the fake discussions to try to keep nuclear powers. And the, the natural gas is of course important for like, uh, the joining the uh, energy shift, so um, uh, uh, we 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 should keep the new natural gas supply, or uh, even even from the U.S. and the Qatar and, uh, and so and also Russians. And so the natural gas is uh, the key to uh, joining from the current situation to until maybe more coming. Uh, several decades to, uh, in order to eliminate oil and also coal, and the natural gas is uh, very much important. Yeah. <coughs> My name is Dr. Sugimoto. I have a question about uh, renewable energy. Um, uh, even though uh, Japan is a uh, uh, pioneer of uh, uh, solar power energy, uh, solar, uh, however, you know the Japanese uh, uh, growth rate of uh, uh, solar power energy is very very low, you know, compared with uh, Japan. What is the reason? And uh, I have a question. Uh, 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 in terms of uh, solar, solar power energy, you know, I have a question. Uh, <coughs> Japan has many um, has many many cloudy 
dates, you know. So, let's say, uh, or any dates. So, how about, you know, let's say, uh, it, even though, let's say, uh, cloudy days or rainy days, you know, uh, solar, uh, we can get uh, in average solar power energy or efficient, you know, how about you say, energy efficient. Uh, Japanese, of course, Japan was uh, one of the very much pioneer to developing the solar power technology, but uh, very much behind of uh, deploying or spreading out of solar po powers because uh, the Japanese government policy is very much poor to developing, deploying yeah. policy. They, they are more focused on just subsidy and r and It's a very kind of old-fashioned policy manners. And the, but at the time, the so-called phenotype was one of the policy innovation to from subsidy or tax to more effective deploying policy development throughout the 90s, uh, basically from uh, Germany and Denmark and the even it was the roots was uh, in the US uh, during the Carter administrations as a so called Papa, pa, Papa Public Utility Policy Act combined with uh, California states of uh, the standard overhaul. Yeah, it was it produced uh, the huge kind of wind power the at the kind of Altamonte Pass and, uh, and, and, and California wind powers is one of the pioneers. And also, the, so along those kind of histories of the policy development, Japan was isolated from the kind of deployed side of policy. So that's the reason. And also, another reason is uh, the electric industry was very much the try to keep monopolies. They, they hate renewable to try to push smaller or marginalize of electricity supply. That is another reason. And, and the, uh, the Japan is, of course, and not just the Japan is a, uh, in some part of every country has a kind of cloudy, except for like a, a desert areas, the Middle East or North Africa. But uh, even, even like Germany has a huge uh, share of now electricity by solar and of wind is uh, because wind power or solar is very much distributed. Uh, each single solar solar has been uh, intermittent, but accumulate huge number of uh, intermittent powers is more weight, right weight. Mm -hmm. So it it is very good for uh, compile to an electricity supply system with like uh, natural gas or like uh, hydropower can compensate over this wave. Uh, then combination of uh, natural gas and hydro and intermittent wave solar and wind can supply safely to the uh, like a changing demand powers. So, so each single cloudy days or rainy days is is not actually does matter of the electricity supply. Is it okay? <laughs> Uh, my name is Hoshino, uh, Aichi University, Nagoya. And uh, I'm interested in the, uh, the results of opinion surveys conducted in each country. Maybe now in Japan, uh, opinion survey say that uh, we are not favor for nuclear power, nuclear energy. Yeah. Maybe similar uh, to Germany, but uh, French may be different. Or uh, how about United States, Russia, or other countries? But globally, if there is a global opinion survey, that's the most interesting. Maybe not, especially by, not by government, but by press. You, you don't write <laughs> your government. 
Uh, actually, I'm, I'm not aware of the all, all of the country, but uh, we, even, even France, after Fukushima, uh, France is actually not so different between the, the pro and con. It's, uh, even, even, and also after Fukushima accident, the con is superior to the pro nuclear. Uh, uh, some poll opinions, uh, independent poll opinions, I believe. And the, I, I'm not sure the US uh, and the Japan is, of course, is still this year's decent Asahi newspaper says uh, like 70% of the people still the nuclear must be the goal uh, if it's a time or soon or later. So, um, yeah, and German is, of course, the, and Switzerland as well, the more, more, more people, uh, more favor to renewable and uh, not favor to renewable, so, yeah. Okay, thank I'm a bit worried. Uh, I'm Peter Fuchs. I've recently uh, become involved with a company called Ocean Energy Advisors. Okay. Uh, looking at, I'm Peter Fuchs. I'm uh, involved with a company called Ocean Energy Advisors. Um, Tokyo, as you said, is very interested in, in the potential of ocean power. But as you know, the uh, grandfather of Abe uh, Shinzo was Kishi Nobusuke, uh, who designed the system on the left that you've described. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, after Fukushima, I think instead of going to local demand pool network renewable, the government seems to want to centralize more and ignore the lessons of 311. Yeah. And I, a good example of that is Fukushima Forward, uh, Fukushima Forward, which is a floating offshore test site yeah. built uh, near Fukushima Daiichi. Um, it's an 18 billion yen project, which is about $200 million. The members of the group are Marubeni Mitsubishi Hitachi, uh, Mitsubishi Juko, Mitsu Izosen, Ishikawa Harimajima, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, classic companies that all owe their background to yeah. Kishi's system. Yeah. Not a single Vestas, Siemens, nobody else, GE, no one is in there. <laughs> and I, I think that's a frightening, you know, uh, 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 direction for this particular government to go. Do you think that this offshore uh, project is simply creating a wind equivalent of nuclear power? You know, very centralized, lots of investment, uh, and the local community, screw you, we'll put it up. You know, Marumeni's job is to take care of the fishermen, which means to give them threats or bags of money. Right? right? If you look at the program, that's what Marubeni's job is to do. So what do you think about this? Is, is Japan going to get into the 21st century sometime this century? <laughs> I hope so. But maybe uh, the kind of historical change are uh, kind of oscillations. Right. So, uh, the, so this time now uh, looks like very back to <laughs> the, the past the system. But uh, actually the last, uh, not just the last election, but the Toward the last elections, uh, it was very the central uh, kind of parties, including Hashimoto sans or Minnanotos, or even inside the LDP like Kono Taro sans as the peoples, uh, tried to kind of update the political system as well and the political the choice. But uh, finally, it was. Uh, the not so uh, the political choice and the central government system are more more back to before March 11 or even back before LD, uh, DPJ's days. But uh, uh, it was one of oscillations and the magmas hoping to change were definitely there and the 
the inside mind of Hashimoto san and, and, and those peoples. But still, old fashion, fashion thinking people are also still there. It's a kind of now balancing. So next time of the change, is that especially this kind of legacy type of politics are failing, the next elections are and learning from the failure of DPJs, they they tried to change, but they couldn't in anything. But next alternative must learn both. So it 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 next change is kind of positive oscillation. Then maybe next oscillation is, but uh, in a long run, this oscillation is <laughs> like that. I give you, okay. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the presentation. Uh, my hobby is uh, electricity. So I have, I built the power supply system using five uh, solar panels, uh, two of them uh, made by uh, Sharp uh, pa uh, Panasonic, and I have a, a Chinese. And I supply all power uh, for uh, housing, I mean, lighting in my house as well as TV. Uh, air conditioning, uh, I cannot drive by solar power. But based on my, uh, let's say, three or four year experience, the major bottleneck is uh, uh, storage. You know, I have five kilo of uh, storage using uh, truck uh, regular batteries. And I have maintained the batteries in many ways. So I think everybody want to see that the, we would like to generate power purely from solar, wind, all of that, without having any nuclear power. That's an ideal situation. But the real challenge is really the te technical challenge, particularly storage. And the, unless we really tackle that problem, I, I don't think we can really uh, supply enough power in a stable way uh, in any country. And I look at the web. And it says that the, in Germany, only 3% of power is supplied by solar at this moment. And so uh, in Japan, I think it's less than 1%. US, I would say less than 3%. And main bottleneck is really the storage of uh, power. I, I think that's the uh, opinion I have based on my own experience. Yeah, uh, actually storage is not just a kind of small, small like a battery. Is uh, from electricity system are uh, like we have in Japan the 30 gigawatt of uh, pumping hydro. This is also high storage. And the uh, in some areas like uh, Nordic country, in some part uh, they have a heat pump uh, create. Uh, the water heat, the hot water for uh, district heating. Uh, so this is also connecting to uh, like a surcharge of the electricity by renewable can be changed into heat through heat pump. It, it, this is also the storage. So, and so a combination of various the from looking of total electricity supply system, we have already more like a mature or more cost effective uh, uh, storage technology we have. And each party have will more like a, along with the technology learning curve, this could be more and more like a, the cost affordable within maybe within a decade. And the recently city group <coughs> investment bank uh, analyzed or forecast the solar PV cost might decline uh, 25 cent per watt by 2020. It's quite cheap. It's only three cent per kilowatt hours. So, and maybe by 2020, and also uh, other report says uh, already in <coughs> India and Italy has already the uh, solar PV is now grid parity of the kind of for the power pool and also next year's 2014 <coughs> in Germany and many countries 
a solar PV power is uh, now fall down to uh, the grid parity price. So, of course, it is, it is solar PV is so expensive until recent years. So, this is on only 3%. But Germany has already 55%, not just solar combined with other renewable technology. And solar PV is now coming the days afterward. So, uh, and maybe small battery is, is coming along with the solar PV, more, more later. But as at, until then, we, we use various kind of our solutions, not just a, a battery type of our technology. Maybe. We're using various kind of storage technology or balancing technologies. So then we can expect uh, like an organic growth of renewable, not just a solar and so we and, and other renewable technology as well. Yeah. I, I agree. So yeah. the solar is independent of how. Yeah. It will, will come to maybe within the ten, ten within yeah. decade, I guess. Next. <laughs> yeah, my name is Kurt Sieber. I also have my own power plant on <laughs> my roof, and uh, I can only say I fully agree with what you say. I mean, um, basically, I think there is nobody in this room who doesn't go uh, want to go for an increase of more renewable energy. I think that is an. I an idealistic dream which we all have. But as you say, after 23 years, if yeah. I understand you correctly, yeah. Germany has now 25% yeah. of all the renewable energy, which means that uh, the other 75%, and again, as you pointed out, we need a, a base production uh, which is regular and independent of weather and wind and so on. Yeah. So we hope that that will go up. But uh, uh, my first question is, can you give us some, we were talking a lot about Germany and Denmark and so on. Denmark, of course, is the super wind power country. And so uh, we all know that. But what about the situation in Japan? What is, as of 2012, according to your um, estimation, what is the a percentage of renewables in Japan, and how much do you see this to go up in 2020 and 2030? Thank you. As for the Japanese situations, uh, the government report says uh, until this end of fiscal year, so this March end of 2013, uh, we in uh, last. July first, we introducing uh, solar field type and the 2.5 gigawatt of renewables increase last like a three quarters. So uh, and uh, among among 2.5, uh, two gigawatt, so 80 percent was solar, and 400 megawatt was wind, and the rest uh, 100 megawatt was other renewables, so 2.5. Yeah, and 2.5 giga, yes, giga. but how many percent is that of, is the, a, of the total? Uh, it's something 2 percent, I guess. 2 percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, then coming this year, this fiscal year, uh, solar PV along uh, some, some in institute prospect, some more doubling, like uh, 5 gigawatt solar increase the coming years and maybe more than gigawatt wind power will come but the uh, it's difficult to say uh, 2020 or 2030 because it's matter of how we can dissolve other barriers the economic barrier can solve by feeder type but uh, the, the most the con constrained barrier is uh, grid. The grid are very much limited by the industry, not electrical or physical constraint, more political constraint. 
So they uh, try to still keep, ma try to marginalize wind power and solar by using various like a technology uh, reasons, but the reality is a political reasons. So we need more like independent body to kind of solve this political constraint by electric monopoly. It, it's depend on that. Uh, then, if we can the improve these grid constraints, uh, we can improve more like a 10 or even 20 percent renewable can, we can uh, expect. And also other complicated, the, uh, uh, complicated like uh, regulatory or local acceptance issues is also the barrier, another barriers we, we need or improvement of our renewable uh, development, the both regulatory or society aspect. 20% by what time? 20% uh, by... And you must have a vision in your yeah. thinking. The government, former government says 10% uh, based on 10% hydro plus 20% renewable. In total, 30% renewable can be possible by 2030. Okay. Yeah. So the 30% includes 10% hydro. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Hello, um, my name's Nancy. I'm currently doing a postgraduate diploma in energy and environment. So your discussion is very interesting to me tonight. Um, obviously, we all get excited about renewables. It's something that you know people can see and can feel that there's a lot of um, improvement going on. But I think, as you say, energy efficiency yep. um, is a really big part of yep. the, um, the uh, solution. Yep. And Japan has traditionally been a leader in um, energy efficiency. Um, I know it no longer is. Um, I believe, again, Germany, that we've heard so much today, is, is currently probably the world leader in energy efficiency. But considering that Japan is already at quite a high energy efficiency level, what steps do you have in mind in your scenario? Is it smart grids? Is it, I mean, what is it exactly that you see in terms of the society needing to do to achieve the energy efficiency of perhaps half as you were suggesting by 2050? Yeah, uh, actually, the before March 11, uh, we are more discussing along with the kind of climate change policy. Uh, the energy efficiency is a core of the climate change policy. And the that it's a the kind of worldwide miss <coughs> Japan is energy efficient countries. It is not. <coughs> if you're looking at this kind of buildings, right, windows, this is single and uh, kind of steel, gray, so it's a uh, not completely not energy efficient building. Uh, not just this is more more better things and more Japanese house. If you're looking at the countryside the house, uh, almost no insulations, sometimes uh, outside. Uh, my, my parents' house in Yamaguchi, uh, even, even Setouchi side, more warmer side, in winters, outside is uh, five degree, inside zero degree, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> so, such kind of house, we have so many. So Japanese energy efficiency is uh, partly <coughs> Uh, partly create because of our industry side and and the and also this is more the kind of amplified the with uh, kind of connecting uh, some uh, manipulating the statistics right the, the per GDP or per per what's to say the so if, if comparing to real data over like uh, the industry side, uh, yes, Japan is very per GDP, is energy efficiency is maybe top runner in 80s. But nowadays, the most industry are now a lot German as other countries, now almost the same level. And the, uh, Big difference of Japan and other countries. Uh, we have still a, 
50% of energy consumed by industry sectors. So more commercial sectors is more much, much smaller, and only 5% consumed by domestic household. And the and domestic household uh, share is very small, only 5%. In Denmark, is 40%. And the, why this is small is compared to uh, the Japanese household, uh, typical, is except for Hokkaido. Hokkaido is very cold, and they are very warm, whole, whole house. But other, other countries, other part of Japan is household. Uh, Tokyo is also different, but most of the house is the very poor insulations. Because of poor insulation, they use very single room uh, heat, like a kotatsu, hot kotatsu, using one room. Other rooms very cold. So they, uh, Japanese, like a domestic house, are uh, not energy efficient. We say, we name it energy poor. It's a, the, if, if the local old house are rebuilt more, some insulation, more decent, uh, more modern house is not so e efficient, but much efficient compared to old house. And fully, the, and all, the, all the rooms are warm, but some slightly energy efficient, but total heat consumption is much larger than compared to the older house. So now, uh, Japanese domestic house Heat, especially heat consumption, is now increasing because of depressing energy old energy poor energy efficient house depressing more energy efficient house are uh, increasing heat. So in every where every aspect of the Japan is now energy efficiency is more losing. So we need more more kind. Of a kind of strategy of deep rocking is like a more more real energy efficient house replacing to more poor energy efficient house and more the heat strategy heat must be replaced by not uh, many in Japanese areas are heat by electricity replacing by renewable heat and and so on. so in. Uh, in every, every aspect, we need more, much more kind of deep working society change uh, approach must be needed. And then uh, it is calculatedly rather easy to decrease in our energy supply can be half by 2050 or even 2030, changing those kind of change. So in this case, efficiency the term efficiency has to be very well defined. Yeah. For example, you know, how much power you can generate out of let's say ten liter of gasoline. Uh, uh, you know that kind of efficiency versus like efficiency you are talking about is a very different. Yeah, of course. Uh, our efficiency, uh, of course, efficiency is more. Uh, de must be defined by demand side like energy service by energy input, and or primary energy input is more correct term. Because like energy service, like, uh, like uh, the lumens for the lighting or the, the warm by heat, by heat, input by electricity is a huge energy input, but the energy the warm house by very air, very heat insulation, well heat insulated house, just by solar is very quite energy efficient. Energy efficiency is definitely must be defined by the energy service terms. So you, you are talking more like the energy production efficiency or something like that. From an engineering point of view, yeah, you talk but, but, about the or let's say one kilowatt of electricity, how much 
for example, power you think yeah, this is a generation efficiency, but we need demand side efficiency. Toshio Toshio Sudo from uh, Fund Management Company. Uh, question regarding uh, local distribution network and uh, community power plant from fi financing perspective. Yeah. As it seems our uh, financial institutions have dilemma financing those innovative new technology. It has potential. It's beautiful, but uh, uh, there is a risk that the FIT expired and the production energy production is uncertain. It's different from blindly financing tech or big major electricity company. How how they can overcome that dilemma? Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, which, which dilemma, uh, energy? To, to finance these... Um, decentralized system? Yeah, yeah, decentralized, small, uh, entrepreneurial... You know. Yeah, uh, okay. uh, there are uh, many, many kind of uh, solutions. If, if, if small, if, even if a small project, it is uh, like uh, defined or registered as a freedom tariff system, it's a very secure for 20 years. It's a local, decently it's a like local, like a financing bank uh, invest without any, like, uh, uh, the, the former, like a, like a person's guarantee or something so. So the small scale the power uh, and also local areas finance is a more like effective, more larger scale and big finance because of our like uh, more face to face relations and small scale money <laughs> so I, I, I don't see any dilemmas. Thank you. Given our time constraints this will have to be the last question. Peter Sensei, thank you very much. Um, my name is Tom Dreams. I'm general counsel here and the professor of law. Um, I wonder if we can get you to give us your considered view on political strategy, not on technical aspects. I mean, I think most of us here recognize, uh, Peter Fuchs had some very, very good comments on, on the old regime yeah. that's in place, and we face a real challenge of there are certain people that are benefit from policies that are destroying this country. You know, and it's not simply Genfatsu, it's been 30 years of policies that are you know, the government in the middle is acting in ways that create problems that benefit the people in the middle, and, keep, and, and we, keep solve, we keep seeing problems that need more and more central solutions. But so how do we oust these people in the middle? You ran for office yourself in Yamaguchi. Um, that didn't work. Now we have the LDP back in power. We have Abe trying to you know, spend more money uh, and, and so on. But in order to fight the Genpatsumura and the coalition of the bureaucrats, the politicians, and all of these corporations that, you know, this is their vested interest. What do we do? Um, what's the political strategy? I know there are some people besides yourselves, like maybe just tell us who they are. I mean, there is the, uh, there's Mr. Song who is still fighting Mr. Mikitani, and Mr. Mikitani has his new Keizai group in opposition to Keidan Ren yeah. and to the Doyukai, the Shinke Ren, which, by the way, is having a, a big convention of people next week. Are you going to be speaking at that, I wonder? Um, who should we be supporting, and what's the strategy, actually, for people to actually take power back from, you know, a coalition of, bu of bureaucrats and corporations and politicians that very much, obviously, are defending their position and doing it very capably? Uh, it's very difficult questions um, for me and the, uh, yeah as, as as along with like um, my former like answers that this is a kind of one-time oscillations and uh, during that this time uh, we, we build up more like a next generation solutions. The, I, I, in in so far, I'm try to act, try to more like a boosting local energy, uh, like a companies or local energy movement. Try to setting up to because now are the time of the energy revolutions, and we need 
we Japan society need energy revolution because of much revenues. But energy revolution worldwide is happening, fortunately for the Japan. And also, the, this energy revolution is not just energy revolution, it's a kind of society revolution worldwide. So it's a kind of the crossing in the, both the societies and energy and Japanese history. So this is a kind of, I believe that's a key. You mean Gaiatsu? Uh, both Gaiatsu and uh, kind of more bottom up, the, not just a kind of grassroots, it's more kind of each, each local community is now standing up along with energy independence. So both Gaiatsu and more standing up local areas, more, more independent people saying, uh, loud, have a louder voice. Then next oscillation come across those internal uh, external network. It could be work. How, I don't know. How about this this the thing next week? The the Shinke event. Shinke. Yeah. Uh, I I actually I I don't involved in the next week, but I I. I keep work, uh, communicate with Mr. Tanisan, but uh, Nick, I, I don't involve it next week. Yeah. Thank you very much for your for your talk.